Hi, this is Daryl, and this will be the first of several videos about HomeSeer and the setup that I run here in my home to make it a smarter home with high WAF, W-A-F, Life Approval Factor. So first of all, I want to tell you what HomeSeer is to clear up any thoughts you may have had about it, uh, help you understand exactly what it is uh, and how you too can run it. Uh, and what sets it apart from other uh, similar products on the market. Um, and I'll say that not many are similar. When you consider a Wink or a SmartThings uh, hub, these hubs are uh, heavily dependent on the cloud. HomeSeer is software. First and foremost, it's software that you can install on Linux, uh, I think also on Mac, therefore, uh, definitely Windows like I run it, and you can buy devices that have HomeSeer on it. It can run all by itself in your house, uh, one way or another, on a box, big box or little box, in your house. Uh, and it's software that you can configure and control. Yes, it can work with things in the cloud, but it is not cloud dependent. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's just take a quick perusal of their website just to take a look at what they have, what they sell, what they have. Uh, they do sell controllers like these. Now these controllers, um, they have a few different models that range from a Raspberry Pi type to something that has more ports and more capabilities. Uh, you'll see the pricing on these is kind of high because they uh, are I don't want to say custom built, but uh, somewhat custom configured, and they include the software. So, uh, getting back to the capabilities of the system, you can uh, obviously control simple things in your home like lighting. This would be Z Wave. Uh, there's also a beta plugin for Zigbee using the, uh, I believe it's the Lightify, yes, it's the Lightify gateway that we'll talk about. Uh, you can also control thermostats that are Z-Wave and some Wi-Fi ones. You can also control door locks that are Z-Wave. Um, that I think is the primary contender uh, are the Z-Wave ones uh, at this point. There may be some others we'll discover as we, uh, we go through things here. Uh, and you can read sensors, all kinds of sensors. Um, I have very simple Oregon scientific temperature sensors that you can get at Walmart. Although I'm not sure if they're the same these days, I have a bunch all around the house and with a, uh, a separate component added to the system, you can read those. That's the thing about this being software is you can get plugins or add-ons for this software uh, that work with various components of hardware, uh, for instance these irrigation controllers, and the software can control those then. Uh, here's here's a uh, infrared controller. Uh, here, actually, this one is contact closure, but there are infrared ones by Global Cash, so you can control your home theater equipment. Here's uh, some irrigation controllers, and uh, the list goes on and on and on. You can interface this, and I had at one point in time at a different house. You can interface this with a DSC alarm panel uh, by wiring it uh, serially into the panel. So there are just a ton of things you can do with it. Just remember that it's software at its core. Um, this software does have a price, but it's in the low hundreds of dollars. This is not stuff that costs anything like 600 bucks per room or thousands for a house uh, like a Crestron or Control 4. This is in the sub uh, $400 range. Uh, and that's for their pro version of the software. You can go far lower than that. And they have these things on sale uh, Black Friday and other times during the year. So here's just a glance at the controllers that they have uh, on their site today. Uh, this one, I believe, is the Raspberry Pi controller that's inexpensive. The uh, STL Pro, uh, a bump up there, and you can see more ports and a little beefier on the uh, S6 Pro. So, uh, yes, you can do it this way. The other thing you could do is do it like uh, on your own box that's similar from Amazon or elsewhere. You can see this box actually is $160. And it's got a serial port, and it's got USB ports, and it's, you know, it's, it's 
pretty ready to go and very comparable to theirs even on its specs with a dual core Celeron uh, this one is even faster or, or equivalent to theirs same amount of RAM and you can stick on whatever OS you want uh, from Windows 7, 8 probably could put 10 on here uh, the other thing you can do is what I do you can run Homeseer it's, it's not a heavy application on a server in your house that does other stuff so this is what my box looks like it's a, a deep silence 4 from uh, Nanoxia and you can get one of these and um, I run a media server out of this I run Plex on this uh, home seer and some other things all out of this nice uh, warm box in my office so you have options like that as well ranging from you know, whatever kind of box you want and build you want to do. I have an 8-core processor. Uh, you can get away like with a dual-core processor and some old hardware you have. You could run this on an old laptop that's got a dual-core, uh, which I did for quite a while. So the possibilities are endless. Just remember, it's software in the end. Uh, then what you add on to the uh, core computer is your capabilities. So here you can add on this little USB stick and you have USB uh, to Z-Wave connectivity here and integration with Z-Wave. Uh, this stick on my tower is how I can control lights around the house, um, the Schlage uh, deadbolt on the front door, um, and any other Z-Wave devices. And so it, that's it, you, you do get some incremental costs depending on your hardware but you're not paying for anything you don't need like I have almost nothing Zigbee put it this way I have nothing controllable that Zigbee in the house so I don't need a Zigbee radio or a controller or interface or any of that today and I do very well with my Z-Wave stuff uh, switches like these and that stick that talks to them so Z-Wave is a mesh network, if you're unfamiliar, we'll dive into that in a, a future video. Uh, and then, like I said, there is a beta plugin out that they're testing right now uh, for controlling lights uh, using this piece of hardware. Uh, not that expensive, again, it pays as you go. Pay, pay for what you want for this hardware, and right now the control, the uh, plugin rather is beta. Uh, I'm sure it'll probably be included eventually in the pro version the software and and just to step back to the software the software is home seer there is the standard version there is the pro version um, this like I said goes on major sale I said 400 earlier uh, it's less than 400 when it's on a, a good sale like Black Friday or some other times during the year um, the difference here is the pro version comes with a ton of extras um, included. It comes with a lot of plugins where you might buy a plugin to interface with that irrigation controller. The plugins range from twenty to forty dollars usually, occasionally higher, occasionally lower. Um, but again your pay as you go and you get very specific uh, important integrations with it and it's not thousands of dollars like a Crestron or a Control 4 to do this stuff. So the other piece that we're going to talk about and what has spurred a lot of interest and uh, spurred me to do these videos at all is HS3. Uh, that's the version that they're on right now, right now uh, Home Zero 3, HS3 Touch. And that is the back end of Home Seer. Uh, which HS Touch availability is included with Homesear. HS Touch Designer that lets you go further than their out of the box uh, capability or, or look, I should say, for designs on the touch devices. The designer is an extra cost. Uh, this is designer on my system with some of the screens that I have on my Android Fire tablets around the house. The Amazon Fire 7 inch, uh, 7 HD I think they are. Uh, I picked up a bunch of them, $33 or so I think on Black Friday, with intentions to put them all over the house. Um, I will tell you that uh, Alexa can also integrate with Homes here, and she's going to talk now because I said her name. Um, I've actually not put all those tablets in place because 
Um, I get by with a couple of them, mostly for status display like this, telling me information more than I touch them for control, because with Alexa I can control uh, home seer devices. So I can say, uh, set the thermostat to 76, and this changes like I touched it here. Uh, I can say, turn on the living room lights, and it hits three of these uh, devices here all at once, or turn them off at the end of the day. Uh, when the kids go to bed, I can say, turn off the subwoofer, and it does. So, uh, this is designer. This lets you make custom screens any way you want, showing any devices you want, with buttons to do whatever you want, uh, navigating around in and out of different screens. So you can see on this screen, um, from the main one, I would hit cameras. That takes me here, and then if I tap on one of these, I've told it when I hit that device, or the, that uh, screen, rather, and in designer they act a little funky um, but when I do that go to the uh, particular uh, Foscam camera uh, image uh, in this uh, LAN in my intranet here so uh, it'll take me then to this screen so and from there I've got a button I, that I made that goes back to the camera screen or goes back to this main screen uh, the one that I call clock uh, so the uh, the possibilities are really endless because you can make this look like anything you want. You can make this look like a Star Trek uh, L cars display, which a lot of people have done, and we'll show those examples soon too. Uh, back to the hardware and software and the core of the system, uh, we talked about the Oregon Scientific temp sensors I have around the house. This receives them. Um, these range on sale from 80 to 120. Uh, there are a few different versions that pick up a few different things. This one you can see uh, does do the Oregon Scientific. Uh, there's another one that does European frequencies and X10 frequencies. Uh, so uh, these extend your capability with cheap sensors uh, where instead of going to buy a Z-Wave sensor for temperature that is $50, uh, give or take 20 uh, you can get this device and go get Oregon Scientific sensors off eBay or wherever you want for like $10 a piece. Put them wherever you want. Uh, so uh, the, the extensibility we'll talk more about. And then to show you what the core basic interface looks like, uh, this is it. <clears throat> this is the main device list in the system. And here we can see patio speakers, uh, the environment, the temperature, um, this uh, device here I actually update virtually in the system uh, with date and time so I can display it very easily on the tablets anyway, anywhere I want. Um, here's the thermostat, it is not running right now. Uh, the uh, CO2 notification on one of the smoke alarms, smoke CO2 detectors checked in and says, yep, I'm fine, battery's fine, everything's good. Uh, the kids under bed lights uh, apparently were on at some point earlier today, this evening. Uh, the air temp in the living room from a multi-sensor. Uh, that's one from Home Seer, but you can get one just like we looked at for $49.95, the Aeon uh, uh, Tech ones. Uh, uh, temperature, motion, humidity, all those things. Uh, the lamps in the bedrooms, you can control here, uh, patio lights, etc. It goes on and on and on. There are things all over the house I can control or I can read right here from this, but the joy of it is being able to put that into a very easy to digest format like the designer screens and the tablets. Uh, so, and, and a question that will I'm sure will come up is why does it look quite funky here with the words outside of where they belong. Um, the, the good thing about this uh, designer is you can do a design and you can deploy it to almost anything. They have an Android client, an iOS client, so you can put this on iPads, iPad minis, Androids. Just think about how many different resolutions are out there for all of those devices and how each one handles fonts a little differently. And you get into a little bit of a tricky dance here when you're designing in scaling 
and using fonts that work and a little bit of a scaling difference between what you see on the screen here and what you get on the tablet when you deploy it to the tablet. Uh, but I will say this was not hard to accomplish to get it to look like the images you see in the Facebook group. Uh, it just takes a little tweak here and there. You can move things a little left, a little right. And then all you do is go tools, deploy, send it to my living room tablet. Boom. It updates there with this in three seconds. Uh, so you can pull that tablet off the wall, have it sitting here while you tweak things for a few minutes and see exactly what you're doing and what the outcome is. So uh, I didn't want to go too long on this first video. I figure this will spur some questions. Uh, and this is kind of a, a very broad, high-level overview of Homeseer and what I'm doing here. Uh, so post some questions, and we'll have another video, I promise, within a few days instead of a couple weeks. A little tough with three kids and everything else going on here. Uh, Daryl, signing out.